Welcome to Fighting Saints Weekly fans. A statement weekend for the Saints winning two of three and putting themselves in position for home ice advantage. Going to need a little bit of help but to control their own destiny moving forward. Jordan Coons with you. Thanks for tuning in here today as we look back to the weekend that was three games in two and a half days. A grueling stretch against two playoff opponents upcoming. Very difficult stretch indeed. But the Fighting Saints showed unbelievable amounts of resilience on Friday blowing the doors off of Cedar Rapids 10-2. Going to Cedar Rapids the next night in a dramatic 5-2 win, and then to Green Bay for the 4-1 loss. A great weekend when all is said and done, knowing that that was a gauntlet right from the outset with the quality of opponent that was, and preventing Cedar Rapids from winning both the Cowbell Cup, which the Fighting Saints still have a chance at, and the Anderson Cup, of which Cedar Rapids does have the inside track on, but it's not completely clinched yet. We'll get to those clinching scenarios in just a bit, but first, if you'd like to take a look back at what was this past weekend, Fighting Saints against Cedar Rapids twice in Green Bay. Take a look at the highlights right here, and let's hear from some of the guys about what they thought about the weekend and this big weekend upcoming next. I thought it was a good success. We played uh, two really good hockey teams here this weekend in uh, three game series. And uh, we won the first two, which is huge. And then the third one, we were a little exhausted, but can't make any excuses for that. Uh, I thought we came out hard in that third game and uh, we gave ourselves a chance to win, but they obviously uh, came on the positive side. Obviously, going into uh, to the weekend, we knew we had two big games against uh, a really good team in CR, and you know they, we scored the first couple, and you know after that, we just kept going and kept going. I mean, on the bench, our attitude was we're not stopping until it hits 50. So you know, uh, it hit 10, and we were like, you know, let's prove that's not a fluke and go out there on Saturday again. And you know, we we went down one, and got it back. And down again, and we got it back, and we got three more after that. So uh, it was it's pretty big. So yeah, I, I mean, I guess I just went to the net. You know, that's where I I gravitate to most times, and it just hit off me. So um, yeah, I I'm just kind of glad it, it went in somehow. So I think it's my line. I think we we've gelled together uh, very well the past couple of weeks. You know. Uh, Starting with that uh, Bloomington and CR Waterloo week weekend, uh, I think ever since then, you know, we've been, you know, have some more chemistry and we're moving the puck a lot better. You know, making simpler plays, just getting the puck to the net. So you know, we're just having fun out there. So oh, it felt great. It was just uh, a good honor to be able to get that opportunity to be a, a record holder here at Dubuque. It's got a lot of great history here, and uh, I'm just super pumped to get that. But I'm also happy that we got the win there. It's going to take everything. Uh, the guys need to trust the process, and we need to come out with uh, good confidence and uh, not look ahead of anything. We need to take one step at a time and uh, one period at a time. So clinching scenarios, of which there are a couple. For the Cowbell Cup, it's simple. Cedar Rapids needs to lose. The Fighting Saints need to win this weekend. That's the only way the Saints can capture the Cowbell Cup once again. If Cedar Rapids wins, or if both teams win, the first tiebreaker goes to Cedar Rapids, and they pick up the Cowbell Cup in essence, regardless of result in that. So if they win Friday, Cedar Rapids does, then they get the Cowbell Cup. If they lose and the Fighting Saints win, then in that case, they would get the Cowbell Cup. As for the Anderson Cup, no shot at it this year for the Saints. It's between Cedar Rapids and Green Bay, depending on how that pans out. Now, as for getting home ice, there is only one way the Saints can get that, and that is if Green Bay is only able to notch just one point this weekend because the Saints hold the tiebreaker against Green Bay and Bloomington, regardless of how that all turns out due to not only regulation overtime wins, but also because of the season series between the two teams, which the Saints have a winning record against both of them. So regardless of how that pans out, the Saints would pick up that second spot. But they're going to need to win both games this weekend to make that even a close to reality. They lose one of them, then that means they will either be third or fourth moving into the playoff picture. And that's how competitive the Eastern Conference is this year. Not to say anybody has a better or lesser chance to move along. It's just that competitive regardless of if you have home ice or not. So we'll look forward to that, see who ends up getting home ice in the first round of the Clark Cup playoffs. If that is the case, then the weekend after this, if it's home ice, the Saints will start here at our house. Or if not, if they're the road team, they'll start the week after that right here. But regardless of that, the playoffs start in two weeks. It's very, very close. So all the drama is right around the corner. First Friday, Sioux City, the last place team in the USHL. They've lost nine consecutive games. It has not been a great stretch for them. 
uh, due to injury as well as a porous defense, which definitely has not helped their cause. They allow the most goals against in the entire league. As for Waterloo on Saturday, a tough test against a team that, by my choice, it may be the most dangerous team in the Western Conference. Their new acquisitions, Ryan Lowe and Sam McCormick, have been really, really good after coming over from Madison, and they just have a darn good team in general. So look out for that on Saturday night. That's at Young Arena. Here on Friday, though, it is Fan Appreciation Night, which is sponsored by American Trust. The grand prize winner of the Winning Edge promotion will win that $5,000 grand prize. How about that? Five grand. The cash grab as well as the shoot for the car, that's also going to be on Friday night right here. A 735 start against the Musketeers. Come on down and celebrate the regular season. The first 2,000 fans inside the building get a commemorative team photo poster, courtesy American Trust. That wraps things up for Fighting Saints Weekly. This is the last one before the playoffs hit, so get ready. It's about to get serious. We'll talk to you next time.